How's the royal family? I pray that everyone is doing well. First and foremost, I'd like to thank my queen, Queen Maxine or Queen Blackfoot for this information. Y'all see this doctor here? Let me um, pull his face up. See this doctor right here? Y'all see the title. He is dead. And I could see, look at his eyes. I see fear in his eyes. And um, kind of hard for me to pronounce his name. But um, I don't want to jack it up. Lee Wung. I'll leave it alone. But anyway, he was one of the whistleblowers because there were several whistleblowers. And they came after him. They killed this dude. Ain't no doubt about it. They seeing that he was killed by this coronavirus, but um, they killed this dude. Let's listen to this. I pulled up a couple of little things real quick so we can listen to it, see what's going on. Let's see here. Wait a minute. I want to refresh this. I don't want to miss none of this. A Chinese doctor who sounded the alarm on the Wuhan coronavirus died of the virus in the early hours of Friday morning, according to a statement from Wuhan Central Hospital. Li Wenyan has, was rumored, was rather accused of rumor mongering by Wuhan police after raising concerns about the virus in December. He was among several whistleblowers that emerged at that moment. Even the Supreme Court of China said that had local authorities listened early on in Wuhan police in particular, things might have been different when it comes to the current outbreak that China is experiencing and really the global community is experiencing right now. The second narrative that's coming out of here now is this concern with state media and how they first reported this. It was late Thursday night, just a few hours ago. They suggested that he in fact did die. And then the outrage and the emotion and the anger on social media here was quick and it was sudden. I mean, it, it came through and it, it, it erupted. It was trending and folks were really starting to express themselves uh, like you had not seen here in years, to be quite honest. Then what happened was state media pulled it down and they did that inciting Wuhan Central Hospital. And Wuhan Central Hospital said, he's not dead, he's in critical condition and we're trying to resuscitate him. And they maintained that statement for several hours. Meantime, the tweets that came from Global Times, the tweets that came from People's Daily, which is the ruling Communist Party's official newspaper, those were deleted. And folks online continued to express their concern. And what we're now seeing is they are posting back again, but uh, one top comment that's getting a lot of likes right now is somebody saying, you can repost this in the middle of the night thinking we're not watching, but we are up and we are watching. Saying. Yeah, a lot of questions about transparency here. David Culver, life for us there. Thank you so much. Wow, that was deep. Let me um, just close this down. Take that. Let me see me close this down. Okay. I got a little bit more to show the royal family, but let me go back over here to... I keep looking at his eyes. That's the part that just blows me away. There was fear in this dude's eyes. And one thing that I do know about this culture is they live in a shroud of you know secretness everything is mysterious and sec they hold a lot of secrets and they always want to give the illusion that they of perfection that's the word i would use perfection and this thing ain't no joke you know these are modern day plagues my royal family so let's get into this next video. Look at his eyes. He knew something. They gave him this shit. In a matter of days, Dr. Lee Wen Liang went from treating patients to becoming one. The 34 year old ophthalmologist diagnosed Saturday with the Wuhan coronavirus. But if action had been taken when he and others started sounding alarms, the severity of the outbreak might have been understood sooner. Struggling to communicate, Lee spoke with CNN briefly by phone. You can hear the hospital machines pulsing in the background. <laughs> It 
It was back in late December when Lee first warned friends on WeChat about a SARS-like disease going around. Lee sent a group message saying that a test result from a patient quarantined at the hospital where he worked showed a patient had a coronavirus. But hours after hitting send, Wuhan City health officials tracked Lee down, questioning where he got the information. Within days, they closed the suspected source of the virus, this seafood market, and they announced the outbreak. But instead of being praised, Lee got a call from Wuhan City Police. With Lee coughing too much and breathing too poorly to speak by phone, we asked Lee by text, how did you feel when this happened? I felt a little afraid, afraid I would be detained, afraid my family would worry, Lee responded. He agreed to sign this document, admitting to spreading rumors online and severely disrupting social order. It reads, we want you to cooperate with the police and listen to our reminder and stop the illegal act. Can you do that? Lee answered, yes, I can. In the weeks that followed, the Wuhan Municipal Health Commission maintained that there was no obvious evidence for human-to-human -human transmission, no infection of healthcare workers, and that the outbreak was, in their words, preventable and controllable. And with that, the people of Wuhan continued about their normal lives. Then came a sudden jump in infections. China's central government took over, scrambling to contain a spreading virus with a rising death toll. Chinese state media first reported that Li was one of several whistleblowers silenced by police. Calls for Li and the others to be vindicated grew online. China's Supreme Court even weighed in, adding, quote, it might have been a fortunate thing if the public had listened to this rumor at the time. But for many, including Li and his parents, it was too late. They all contracted the coronavirus. Li is now fighting for his life, alone in quarantine, but online considered a hero. Tens of thousands praising his attempts to sound the alarm Damn. ahead of what's become a global health emergency. After the Chinese Supreme Court made those comments in support of Lee and the other whistleblowers, we did hear from Wuhan police. They released a statement essentially saying, look, the whistleblowers weren't fined and they weren't detained. They were simply questioned and let go. Now, we did also reach out, CNN did, to Wuhan police as well as the local health commission. Allison, they declined to comment. Damn, they left out a cold message. Now his whole family infected and he is dead. And no telling who, the, what happened to the other uh, whistleblowers. Wow, wow. You know what I don't like about this is you can't be silent about a disease uh, on this magnitude. This is a pandemic and it spreads quick, uh, quickly. You know, I, um, I know y'all seen it probably over on Lisa's channel where they build a hospital in 10 days. And they said the hospital was to hold um, a thousand patients. My construction eye, that was way more. That hospital could hold way more than a thousand patients. Because when I was look, I looked at various footage um, on that. Not just the little quick stuff. I, I, you know, I went into, I went into, you know, went into their media outlets and looked at some things too. And based on my construction eye, that hospital could hold probably about ten thousand people. I know what I was looking at and stuff. So um, they pissed. So they said we taking them out, and no telling who else they taking out. I know they literally shocked. So. Let's listen to this. China reports, deletes, then again reports death of Wuhan virus whistleblower doctor by John Hayward on February 6, 2020. Several Chinese state media outlets reported the death of Dr. Li Wenliang on Thursday, only to delete their reports a few hours later and publish new bulletins indicating he remains in critical condition at Wuhan Central Hospital. No explanation was offered for why the death of Li, who was arrested for spreading rumors after providing one of the earliest warnings about the true danger of the coronavirus epidemic, was incorrectly reported by state-controlled media. Li was one of eight people notoriously arrested in December for rumor-mongering by warning colleagues about the highly contagious nature of the Wuhan virus. He went on to contract the virus in January from one of his patients and has been hospitalized for several weeks. His death was widely reported on Thursday morning. To the great dismay of the Chinese public, which expressed anger that a heroic whistleblower died from the coronavirus after suffering this treatment by the authorities, 
and fear that a 34-year-old man in seemingly good health could die from the disease. According to official Chinese government reports, most of the roughly 560 people who have died from the Wuhan virus to date were elderly or had serious medical conditions before they contracted the disease. The first indication of Li's death was a Twitter post from China's state-run Global Times, which would have been intended for an international audience since Twitter is banned in China. The tweet has since been deleted, along with various stories in Chinese media about his death including a post by the official newspaper of the Chinese Communist Party, The People's Daily. In the fight against the pneumonia epidemic of the new coronavirus infection, our hospital's ophthalmologist Li Wenliang was unfortunately infected. He is currently in critical condition and we are trying our best to resuscitate him, Wuhan Central Hospital said on Thursday afternoon in a statement quoted by CNN, suggesting he was still alive. An earlier statement from the hospital said, during the fight against the novel coronavirus outbreak, Li Wenliang, an ophthalmologist at our hospital, was infected. Efforts to save him were ineffective. He died at 2.58 a.m. on February 7. We deeply regret and mourn his death. The Global Times later published a tweet with similar language. We are deeply saddened by the passing of Dr. Li Wenliang. We all need to celebrate work that he did, said the World Health Organization in a tweet that was also subsequently deleted. Foreign policy anointed Li the first virus martyr when news of his death was published, noting that a large-scale scrubbing of news and social media posts about him commenced immediately. FP was skeptical of the subsequent claims that Li is still alive, Suspecting Beijing is trying to determine whether it can sell angry citizens on the image of Li as a party hero who gave his life trying to protect the people. As news of his death spread like wildfire on social media, however, previous reports were deleted, as were threads about him, one of which had recorded 5 million comments, and the claim was put out that he had been resuscitated though was still in critical condition. It may be that Li was truly lingering on the edge of death. Or it may be that the government was terrified of the possibility of making a martyr. There are claims that Lee's body was literally strapped back into life support when the extent of public anger online became clear. In the end, his employer stated he had died at 2.58 a.m. Friday. The New York Post reported that at least two friends of Lee have reported his death, one of them doing so in a post on Weibo, the Twitter-like service that Chinese subjects are allowed to read that also called for the government of Wuhan to apologize for harassing him. Li was not just arrested in December, but humiliated by local authorities. The doctor was forced to sign a letter that patronizingly read, We solemnly warn you, if you keep being stubborn, with such impertinence, and continue this illegal activity, you will be brought to justice. Is that understood? It should be noted that while he felt obliged to sign the letter, Lee never stopped using his Weibo account to challenge inaccurate government reports about the virus, including persistent false claims that it could not be spread between humans. The South China Morning Post sipped it through the chaotic messaging from Wuhan Central Hospital and concluded its last statements indicated Lee is dead. According to this report, the last grim declaration from the hospital capped several chaotic hours in which Chinese media first reported Lee's death, only for the hospital to respond that Lee was alive though in critical condition. If the confused messaging was an effort by the Chinese communists to manage public grief and anger over Li's mistreatment, illness, and death, it does not appear to be working. Although the good news, from Beijing's point of view, is that much of the outrage has been focused on easily scapegoated Wuhan officials rather than dictator Xi Jinping or the national government. The SCMP quoted several furious posts on social media. Chinese social media has been awash with anger over the death of the whistleblower, some mourning Li's death with candles, some demanding that the authorities apologize for the way they had treated him. None of the police has ever apologized to you. You could have been a national hero, but the dereliction of duty has claimed your life, along with a few hundred innocent lives, a user said on Weibo. The reprimand of Dr. Li will be a shame in China's anti-epidemic history. Dr. Li alerted the public at the expense of his life. Wuhan police station still hasn't recalled that reprimand notice even after his death, another Weibo user wrote. Dr. Li's fate is a singularly delicate issue for the Chinese government, which has tried to fight back against the coronavirus, while also stifling widespread criticism that officials have delayed and mismanaged the government's response to the initial outbreak in Wuhan. 
observed the New York Times, which thought the reports of Lee's death were more poorly sourced than the ones that claimed he was clinging to life. The BBC and the Wall Street Journal, on the other hand, judged Lee as more likely dead. The BBC cited journalists and doctors at the scene who said government officials had intervened after Lee's death was announced. Ordering the story changed to reports that a last-minute medical intervention saved his life. Later in the afternoon, the story changed again and his passing was once again reported with a revised time of death. Wow. Wow. They took that dude out. Literally. You know, he's a doctor. Um, I don't... I don't think a doctor, well, they could be sloppy, but I would think anybody that was a whistleblower, they would make sure, and they are a doctor on top of that, they would make sure that they wouldn't contact it. And now his whole family got it, plus he is dead. And you see right here, you know, how this stuff is spreading. And these numbers are not even true. They always underreport. It ain't just China. They do that around the world because they don't want the masses to um to panic we already know that we ain't dumb we you know we see this shit already oh it's saying they saying okay they claiming over 28,000 cases in china and 563 deaths and they build a hospital for a thousand i know what i'm talking about on this okay now they saying worldwide that don't even go together so now worldwide there's a uh, okay over 28,000 and um 566 deaths and it's um branching out everywhere let's see these pictures here see what we got here going cuz i know they got some you know over here in the states or they claiming we got 12 over here man it could be like 5 or 600 there too as well and um you see how the doctors and the nurses i mean you would think they was in some type of nuclear lab or something like that the way that they got these 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 people they killed that dude we ain't no fool they killed that dude and one thing like i said before yeah oh great see now look at this this is this hospital that they put together in 10 days and they claiming that that will hold a thousand patients one wing alone can hold a thousand patients y'all can't see my mouse let me count one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve let me see, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Uh, yeah, it was about, they can hold about 20,000 patients or more. Like I said, one wing alone, one wing alone can hold a thousand people. So this shit is worse than they are even reporting. And you know, when it's something on this level, all the countries will come together to try to keep the numbers down. That is massive construction. We got some construction workers out here with these close, close, close pictures. Okay. I know what I'm looking at. Let me see here. One, two, three, four. Yeah, right there. That could hold that could hold five thousand patients right there. Fooling me. Look at this. Modern day plagues. Stay out of them damn Chinese food restaurants. You can go and make your own shit. Some nut came to my table. Channel, excuse me. Talking about when I eat Chinese food, I just hope it don't make me sick. I, I blocked his ass, whoever that was. That was the most ignorant shit I have ever heard. You know, here's the symptoms of um, how the uh, coronavirus 
can kill symptoms. Runny nose, cough, sore throat, high temperature. Let's see here. You got to have con close contact. They're basically saying the virus is transmitted between humans and droplets for um, coughing and sneezing and touching or handshaking. It enters the, hum the humans uh, through the nose and mouth, then finds a host cell in the respiratory system, such as in the nose, host cell, then bursts in other nearby cells in the body or infected with the virus. Death. Most victims die from complications, including from pneumonia and other swelling in the lungs. Severe ammonia can kill people by causing them to drown in fluid and um, flooding their lungs. The virus uh, um, also causes swelling in the respiratory system, which can make it harder for the lungs to pass oxygen into the bloodstream, leading to organ failure and death. But remember this, most of the time when people die of this, their immune system is already compromised. And many of y'all, and I have been really astounded that every day <clears throat> someone, someone's are emailing me to, they want to see the video that I've been passing around and I've been given the link of what we can take to build up our immune system quickly so i will um y'all keep emailing me and i keep sending it because what i was told by many of y'all in the royal family y'all do not want me to put this information out that the enemy would have to go find it for they sales so i will be obedient and take heave to the royal family so this is the doctor that passed 34 years old it killed him because um um he told on their ass basically that we got a problem out here and then they build a hospital to that scale wow that's some uh, that you know that's the way it goes so uh again queen maxine i thank you this was this was important to put out so people know what's going on and keeping the royal family informed of our current events so my royal family render your voice with your beautiful divine words and as always my royal family i thank you for your love i thank you for your support and with that said ashe